What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So to, in today's video, I'm super excited to be checking out the newest version of Scatter version 2. So Scatter, as a lot of you know, is the fantastic scattering plugin for SketchUp. Um, it's really great for adding things randomly, doing things like uh, adding vegetation, or now you can use it to do a bunch of other things as well. But I wanted to talk through some of the new features, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so you can check out the newest version of Scatter by visiting the sketchupessentials.com slash scatter or by visiting the link in the notes down below. And so if you want to get straight to the summary of what's new, if you scroll down just a little bit, there's a button here that'll take you to the what's new section. So there's a video from the guys over at Scatter as well as it talks through some of the features. So I thought that we could just go through some of those and take a look at them. So first off, um, so it is significantly faster than it was before. So if you remember when you worked with Scatter before, um, things could drag a little bit and uh, it definitely feels snappier when you use it. So let's say I had scatter activated and I just wanted to add something to this face. So all you have to do is just add a host. Uh, it gives you instructions on what to do so you can just mouse over it and click on it and it's going to place those scatter objects in here. So you can see how that runs really quickly in this new version. So in the new version of Scatter, it now has integration for 3D Bazaar. 3D Bazaar, if you remember, is the uh, basically the model warehouse designed specifically for renderable models. Well, now you can access this just by clicking on it inside of Scatter. So not only can you find all the Scatter version 2 contents in here, so you've got your shrubs, you've got your flowers, other things like that. Um, notice how some of these are free and some of those are paid, but it gives you a larger library of plants to access. You can also access the entire 3D Bazaar through this link as well. And what that's going to do is that's going to integrate with Scatter, allowing you to add those things really quickly. So let's say we wanted to add something simple like these garlic flowers, for example. We'll just click on this and notice how this is going to give you an option to download either the high poly or the high poly and the proxy. Usually you're going to want the proxy um, because you don't want to bring in this high polygon stuff into your model. And so what you would do is you would just download this file in order to bring it into your scene. So I'm going to click on the button for download and we'll just bring this in. That's going to take forever on my internet connection. So we'll come back when this is done and take a look at what it does. All right, so then all you have to do is click on the import button. When you click on the import button, that's going to bring the model file in here and it's going to set this up so that you can quickly add this to an object. So this one, for example, it's going to need a group or component. So I'm going to make this a group, but then we could make this the host. Well, then you can set it up so these plants show up in here. And remember that Scatter sets these up with proxies, meaning we're not creating a ton of geometry in our model to speed up our model. So what that means is that means that now, and let's go ahead and let's bring our density down a little bit. That's one thing I really like about this is now you've got the ability to um, drag this to the left or the right. And then you just click the button in order to update your screen. So it's really fast. But then let's say we were to take this over into like an Enscape or something like that. And so what you'd want to do is you'd want to make sure that you've clicked on render only and click on generate. But then if you were to look at this in your render engine, notice how these flowers are going to render out with the full materials, even though over in SketchUp, it's just bringing in this proxy geometry to save performance. So this is a really great way to bring in high quality models. Um, and 3D Bazaar is really more focused on the renderable models. So that's something that's really their focus. That's why the models are so big. But the integration with Scatter I think is brilliant and um, giving you access to all these different plants, even if some of them are paid. And if you need something like this, um, being able to actually access them in a render ready form, I think is a big win for SketchUp in general. So there are a number of different new scattering methods inside of this new version. So the first I wanna talk about is the zones, which allows you to group similar objects together. So let's say for example, that we were to add a host and then add some scattered objects. So in this case, these purple and red boxes. I'm going to click on the button for generate in order to generate those. Don't do that with your higher poly stuff because you don't want to generate the actual geometry in here. It'll slow down your scene. Since this is just a bunch of cubes, it's going to work okay. Well, notice how right now what you're getting is you're getting this random distribution, right? You've got reds mixed in with purples, all of that different kind of stuff. Well, with zones, which is under distribution, what this is going to do is it's going to group those together. 
and it's gonna group those together based on the size. So let's start with something like, we'll call it 24 inches, and then I'm gonna generate this. And so notice how with 24 inches in here, it doesn't really change anything all that much. So let's go ahead and run that up a little bit. So from 24 inches, I'm gonna run this up to maybe like 128 inches. And then I'm just gonna click on the generate button. Well, notice how now with 128 inches, what it's doing is it's grouping your objects together based on type. So now you've got purple objects kind of grouped over here. You've got red objects kind of grouped together like this. This is really good for like flowers or other things that um, would have their own kind of zones in here. And so the bigger you make this, the more pronounced this is gonna be. So if I was to add, t take this up to like 500 and then regenerate this, notice how you're gonna get an even more pronounced line between your purples and your reds. You can use the blur and the noise in order to um, basically procedurally add add a few items that do kind of overlap. So notice how when we add some blur and some noise, now you've got a little bit of purple mixed in with the reds over here. So you can kind of play around with that grouping, but this is an interesting thing that could be really helpful for placing plants and flowers. All right, so there's a number of new masks in here. I really like the image mask. And basically what this does is this allows you to take like a black and white image and use it to set where objects are going to go. So objects are gonna get placed where the white is, and not where the black color is. All right, so we've got this quick mask that I created in Photoshop. Notice how it's just got blacks and whites in here. And so let's say that we wanted to mask out these shapes on this face. Well, all we would do is we just go into the masks right here and we would just select our placement mask. One thing I recommend when you do this is you wanna make sure that you click into your settings and you wanna display the texture to make sure that it's sitting on your face properly, right? Because right now it's way too small. So we're gonna bring this up to like 100 or we may end up like 400. But then you can also adjust the offset. So how this sits on your surface. But then what we can do is we can click on the generate button right here. We'll notice how that's gonna mask out the objects wherever this dark area is. Or you could also click on the button to make it exclusive meaning you could make these show up at the dark areas instead of the light areas. So now you can use an image file in order to better mask out things inside of Scatter. So another cool feature is the ability to add colors. So if you were to scroll down to the materials section, you can use this color picker right here and you can select materials. So I can click on all four of these and click on done. Now to notice how these show up in here. Well, now if I click on the button for generate, this is going to randomly apply materials to your objects inside of um, scatter. So let's say I wanted less of this green color. What you can do for each one of these is you can click into the settings and then adjust the probability. So let's say you wanted less green. You would just bring the probability down to like 25% then click on generate. Notice how the green is now gonna be less likely to show up on objects inside of your scenes. So there's some other pretty cool masking functions in here as well. So for example, under the masks functions, really you can see all of them. There's the paint mask. Um, you can use entities as masks. You can use another composition or what we wanna look at right here, which is pick a curve to use as a mask. And so let's say we have a curve. Notice this curve is in here as a group. Um, it has to be as a group, but let's say we have a curve in here, you can select that curve like this and use it as a mask. So the way that can work is you can set the thickness right here. Well, then if you regenerate this, you can set this so this either um, masks things in, meaning it's only close to the curve, or we could switch it so that it's away from the curve. And then you can adjust the thickness to adjust how far away from that that goes. So you can use this in order to mask out curves. All right, so let's say we have a pair of faces in here where we don't want objects scattered. So you could come in here and you could use an entity like these flat faces as a mask. So I'm gonna click in both of these. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we switch these to contours. If we switch them to contours and then click on generate, if you have these set as inclusive, it's only gonna include objects inside of these. If you swap it to exclusive, like this, then it'll mask things out inside of the circles that you draw. So let's say you have like trees or something like that. You can use this to mask out grass around the trees. So you were kind of limited before to kind of up and down scattering. Well, now 
for your objects, you can set your type to be to the world space, the object space, or the face space. So notice how what this allows me to do is this allows me to scatter things along the face right here. I might come in here and like paint out the top. And we'll go ahead and swap that. And so you can use this in order to scatter things on a vertical surface as well. But you can use it to scatter things in any direction now as well. And so let's say you had like a big crowd of people and you wanted them all looking at something. So under your transformations, there's now an option for look at. So you can target a point or the sun. We're going to go ahead and pick a point. I'm just going to set it right here. And then I'm going to click on generate. What that's going to do is that's going to take all the objects and basically it's going to set them so... Like if I was to double click on this one, for example, it's gonna set them so that the object red axis is facing towards the central point. So all you would need to do is just make sure that your objects are facing towards the red axis. So there is just a bit of setup here, nothing too bad, but um, whatever your object red axis is, that's basically gonna point that at the point. So notice how I could take this entire crowd of people and point them at this central point if we decided that we wanted to do that. All right, so we're gonna jump over into the scatter video real quick because I haven't had a chance to play with this one yet. The LODs function could be huge. Basically what it does is it lets you set the level of detail that is displayed inside of your scene um, based on where your camera location is. And so what that means is that means that at a certain distance from a camera, this is going to generate different objects. So if you look at this, right, there's a camera location that you set. The things that are closer to your camera object are full detail. The things that are further away are this much lighter detail. And so what that does is that allows you to minimize the processing power required to do different scenes. So if you look at this, right, these all look kind of the same. You can't tell that in the background of these objects, uh, there's actually much less detail. So that's a function that I see in a lot of other programs like Unity and some other programs like that. But that one could be a big deal long term. So there's some other things in here like custom fall off curves. But what I really want to do real quick is just I really like the new UI. So it just feels a little bit more user friendly to me. So you've got the option in here for the composition manager. What that's going to do is that's going to allow you to keep all your compositions on, but then you can also toggle them off inside of your scene. So notice how when I toggle this off, I don't have this geometry in here anymore. You can also, um, so it's really easy. You could put them on a layer. You can edit them just by clicking right here. When you, when you edit them, it just pulls up the composition editor right here. And then even over here, it gives you instructions for each one of the tools. So like when you add a host, it tells you what to do right here. When you add an object, it tells you what to do right here. So it feels a little bit more user friendly to me as well. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you'd like to see tutorials on any of these features in depth, leave a comment in the notes down below. I will link to this extension on this page in case you're interested. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.